doctors. I get a phone call from my agent. And he's like, Gabe, check it out. CHP, California Highway Patrol, wants to hire you to do a show. I go, really? What does it pay? They want you to donate your time. I think I'm busy. <laughs> they told me to let you know you have a warrant in the city of Fresno, California. I'm like, oh, they're good. <laughs> so I did the show, and I'm going to tell you guys right now. I'm going to tell you guys right now. It was one of the scariest shows I ever did. A room full of nothing but cops. Everybody's drinking a lot. And I'm scared because if they get ghetto, who do I call? <laughs> you know, I got to go out in the parking lot and find some gang member. Hey, back me up. So the show went good. It went so good that they asked me to do another show in California, in San Diego, for the California Highway Patrol, Border Division. And I tried to make up an excuse that my car wasn't working right. They said, no worries, we understand. They sent a patrol car to my house <laughs> with a freaking uniformed officer. And I was like, oh my God. Best part was I didn't tell my family he was coming. <laughs> oh yeah, sometimes you have to create your own entertainment. It was hysterical. Five o'clock rolled around. I'm like, he should be here any minute. Sure enough. <laughs> Frankie! Frankie, can you get the door, please? Okay, Gabriel. So he goes to the door, comes back, and he's got like, you know, he's like, Gabriel. <laughs> Gabriel, the police are here. Why are you whispering? Because something's going to happen. <laughs> when he said that, I'm like, oh, I got to freaking let him have it now, right? I said, oh, my God, Frankie, they found me. What do you mean, Gabriel? I gotta go, Frankie. I gotta go take care of your mom for me, okay? I love you. I love you. No! I gotta go, Frankie. And I saw the officer. I said, pretend you're arresting me. I want to freak out my kid. No problem. Turn around and put your hands behind your back. I can't reach. Just hold my hand. Walk me to the car. Just walk me to the car. Come on, just walk me to the car. He doesn't know the difference, dude. Just walk me to the freaking car. Come on. I get to the cop car. He throws me in the back seat, right? And slams the door. And I ask him, is it okay if I yell out the window to freak out my kid? You want to use the microphone? Yeah! <laughs> Freaking. <laughs> Here you go, sir. And he hands me the microphone and I said, Frankie, this is the police. We have your father. We're coming back for you in one hour. <laughs> Do your homework. <laughs> one minute later, my girlfriend calls me. You're an ass! <laughs> What's he doing? He's doing his homework. <laughs> That's called parenting, baby. He got even with me, though. He totally got even with me. I walked in the kitchen one morning. He's sitting there, and he looks at me, and he goes, Gabriel, I have a question for you. What's a hooker? What did you say? What's a hooker? Where did you hear that? I was watching HBO, and there was a commercial for a show called Hookers at the Point. It said this Saturday at 11.30, check out all the hookers. <laughs> What's that mean? Oh, that means we're going out Saturday. <laughs> What's a hooker? Let it go, dude. Tell me. You don't need to know. Tell me. Frankie, that's for adults. You said it was an adult. I said you eat like an adult. <laughs> and what you do in the bathroom, you are grown up, trust me, but you don't need to know what a hooker is. He throws a fit in the kitchen. Hooker, 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 hooker. What are you doing? Hooker. He won't stop. I don't know what to do. So I snapped. Quit it! And he stopped. And apparently his mom heard that. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I yelled, oh, oh my God, he went from being my son to my girlfriend's little cub once again. <laughs> and here she comes from the other side of the house, mama lion to protect her little, you know. <laughs> I can see her coming. <laughs> Oh my God, he wants to know what a hooker is. And that's why you're yelling? Tears, right? You said if he had any questions, he could come to you. I didn't know he was gonna ask me that. You said, don't worry, baby, I'm the man, I'll take care of it. <laughs> Tell him. Are you serious? Tell him now. <sighs> Frankie, you wanna know what a hooker is? Yeah. Those are your mom's friends.
they don't like me anyway. At least now when they come over the house. Frankie, who's at the door? Who could you hear? My buddies are like, what did he say? <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, I keep coming back to alcohol, huh? I keep having these issues with it, you know? Like I got loaded one night and I don't know what happened. I accidentally wound up at this um, dance place. <laughs> Gentleman clubby place, right? I wasn't driving, it was an accident. We pulled up to the place and I knew where I was at. Even when you're drunk, you could be drunk and blind. You know where you're at. As long as you hear, you know. <laughs> I walked in there and I got recognized by one of the dancers and you gotta call them dancers or entertainers or they get mad at you. They'll get mad. Like, I am not a stripper, okay? Oh, I am an entertainer. I'm like, no, I'm an entertainer. You're nasty. Some girl recognizes me, she's like, oh my God, I know who you are, you're famous. And I'm like, oh no, oh no. And some other dancer who's spinning on a pole overheard famous and she stopped, just <laughs> She walks over, oh my God, you're famous? Can I have your autograph? I said, you don't even know me. I don't care, sign it. <laughs> okay, relax. What's your name? Diamond. What's your last name? Rodriguez. <laughs> Two diamond. With all my love and affection. Hurry up! I got mad, so I wrote George Lopez. <laughs> I was drunk, I didn't care, right? I'm all loaded. She freaked out. She's like, oh my God! Oh my God! You're George Lopez. I can't help it, you guys. I was so drunk, I did this. I said, I know her. <laughs> hey, hey, cabrona, why you crying? Why you crying? Mira, muy chingona, I cry. I won't lie, you guys, George knows I do that. I don't think he likes it. I've done that to a couple of other people, you know. I did that to Paul Rodriguez, and Paul was cool. Paul was really cool about it. He was like, you know, hey, I heard there's a guy out there who knows how to talk like me. Is that you? I said, yeah, that's me. That's pretty good. I said, I know how. Can you do Mencia? Da, da, da. That's how you do it! <laughs> now, Carlos knows I do that, and he gets mad at me because he goes, you gotta do it better. <laughs> I told a story a story that went viral called the racist gift basket story. The story itself is about 15 minutes long, okay? I'm gonna give you the three minute version of that story so you understand what's going on. Basically, Martin and I are doing a show in Sacramento, California. We're driving from LA to Sacramento. We're passing through a small town called Fresno. As we're passing through Fresno, we reach out to the local promoter who does the shows there. We're good friends with him. And he tells us, you know, because we're trying to have lunch, and he goes, he's busy, but by the way, G. Riley's in town. And we're like, oh shoot, our friend G. Riley's in town. He's at the hotel. All right, he's at the hotel. We knew exactly where he was at. So I say, Martin, how about we go and visit G? Martin goes, let's stop by. I figured first, let's go pick up some soda, some drinks, so we can surprise him. So we get to the market. As soon as we walk in the door, we see a whole pile of gift baskets. Martin goes, we should get him a gift basket. I said, Martin, G. Riley doesn't like gift baskets, okay? He doesn't like the fancy wine and the fancy cheese and the sausage. He definitely hates crackers. <laughs> you don't even know why that's so funny. But anyways, 
I said, how about this, Martin? He doesn't know we're coming. Let's have a little fun with him. How about we make him a racist gift basket? And Martin goes, what's that? I go, you know, Martin, a racist gift basket, a gift basket designed to have fun with whatever race you're trying to mess with. Now, in G's case, he's black. It was easy. (laughs) Now, I say easy not to be an ass. I say easy because there's so many stereotypes attached to African Americans. So, we have this empty gift basket. What do we put in it? Fried chicken, watermelon, Kool-Aid, grape soda, barbecued potato chips, sunflower seeds, an ebony magazine, a Chris Rock DVD called Bigger and Blacker, Magnum condoms, Newport cigarettes, a rack of ribs, the recipe for cornbread. We put everything but a white girl with a big ass in the basket. We wrapped it up really nice, we put a big bow on it, and we took it to the hotel. We had the girl at the front desk delivered to his room. Martina and I are waiting in the hallway where he can't see us. So she knocks on the door. G. Riley opens the door, she gives him the gift basket, he says thank you, closes the door. Martina and I run over to the door and we start listening to him opening up the gift basket. As he's opening it, he's getting excited and he is enjoying every single thing he is pulling out of that basket. He is loving this basket until he realizes it's a practical joke, and then he freaks out because he read the greeting card. The greeting card (laughs) freaked him out because now he thinks that the KKK sent the gift basket. (laughs) Now some of you are like, why does he think that? Because that's what we wrote. (laughs) If you're gonna do a practical joke, you go big or you go home is what I'm trying to say. So he freaks out and he tries to run out of the hotel room. As soon as he gets in the hallway, he sees Martin and I laughing and he puts two and two together. So then he cusses us out, he forgives us, gives us a hug, high five, we go back in his room and then I eat his chicken. (laughs) What winds up happening is that story goes crazy on Comedy Central. People are giving him a hard time so they pull it. Next thing you know, I upload it through YouTube. YouTube. 10 million views it gets on YouTube. Then they flag it because the word racist is on the title, so it gets pulled off. So then I re-upload it, it gets another 10 million, then I had people share it. All in all, the video's probably gotten about a little over 100 million views. So here's what happened. Just like the chocolate cakes. (laughs) The diet soda and the deodorant. Before you know it, people started bringing me Mexican racist gift baskets. Now when it first started happening, listen guys, I'm not gonna lie, it was actually kinda cute because it was only other Mexicans bringing me these quote unquote Mexican racist gift baskets. It started in LA after a show. This one guy walks up to me with a basket and he's like, hey what's up homie? Got your racist gift basket. I said, we're the same race. Yeah, whatever. All right, whatever. (laughs) I take it backstage and all the items in the basket made it to my house. There was a Mexican blanket with a tiger on it, a bunch of bottles of Fanta, bottles of Sangria, Vicente Fernandez CDs, Mexican candy, pan dulce, sweet bread, mazapanes. Everything made it to my house. Now, the more East Coast we started traveling, and the more down south we started performing, the more (laughs) creative the gift baskets started getting. Fast forward to Mobile, Alabama. (laughs) Oh, it gets good. (laughs) Earlier tonight, before we kicked off this special, my friend Martin was out here making a couple of announcements. One of the announcements that he made was, If you brought a gift, please hold on to it until after the show. Don't bring it to the stage. It could interrupt the flow of the performance. The only reason why he makes this announcement every single night is because of one show in Mobile. So here's what happens. I tell the entire racist gift basket story, the full 16 minutes, right? As soon as I finish, a guy from the back of the theater rushes the front of the stage. Now keep in mind, This area is full. In Mobile, the aisle was right up the middle. So the guy had a clean shot to me. He hauled ass like it was the prize is right, all the way down. (laughs) Much like tonight, there was security there that night. Security sees the guy with the basket, but no one thought to stop him. (laughs) 
All they did was, that's pretty. Oh, that's nice. That's pretty, yeah. So the guy makes it all the way to the front. He takes the gift basket and he puts it on the stage. Now he's heckling me from where you're sitting. I'm standing here and he's like, Fluffy! What's up, dude? I got this for you. Thank you. Open it. I go, sir, we're kind of in the middle of a show right now. I says, I appreciate the gift. That's very nice of you. I says, but uh, how about this? I'll, I'll open it after the show. Oh, come on, Fluffy. I want to see your face. Um, sir, how about this? How about you take the gift basket and you bring it over here to the side of the stage where security's at, and I'll have security escort you behind the curtain, and then I'll open it up backstage with you in front of me. How's that? And he's not taking no for an answer. Now, the problem is the crowd just saw me tell the racist gift basket story, and all of a sudden, there's a guy with a gift basket. They have no idea I'm not affiliated with freaking Duck Dynasty in the front row. So now I'm trying to defuse the situation before it gets crazy, but he's not taking no for an answer. Next thing you know, he does something no other audience member has ever done in my 19 plus years as a comedian. He takes the whole crowd away from me, flips them, and then uses them on me in five seconds. It was the most amazing, horrific thing I have ever witnessed. This is all he did. Come on, Fluffy! We want to see your face! We want to see your face! We want to see your... He gets 2,000 people behind him to start chanting, We want to see your face! We want to see your face! It was very evident this was not the first rally he's ever led. The crowd is so loud, I can no longer hear myself over the monitor. So I'm like, I lost. So I get on my hands and knees, I put the microphone down, I grab the gift basket, and I start tearing it open. I reach in. Forget about pulling out Mexican soda, Mexican candy, or a Mexican blanket. This dude was a pro. I started pulling out gardening tools. I'm pulling out a rake, a toy shovel, a toy leaf blower. Dig deeper, Flappy, dig deeper! I pull out a soccer ball. I go, dude, it says Puerto Rico. They ran out of Mexico. I pull out a brick. I go, what's the brick for? The wall. I pull out an actual application for U.S. citizenship. I said, there's no way this can get any worse. Dig deeper! I was wrong. I pull out an old school box of Crayola crayons. You know the 64 pack that has a sharpener in the back? Okay. There's a window on the front of the crayon so you can see all of the colors that are in the box. All of the crayons in the box are brown except for one white crayon right in the middle. And I said, what the hell is that supposed to mean? And he looks at me and he says, welcome to my world. 